Brian Prier, tutoring high school chemistry. Today's topic is precipitates. Precipitates are the insoluble products of a chemical reaction. Most chemical reactions occur in solutions. Like, we've got one down here, lead nitrate and potassium iodide. You'll probably have a beaker of lead nitrate and a beaker of potassium iodide, and they'll just look like some sort of liquid. Once you pour one into the other, and they mix, what you'll get is some liquid and then a lump of something or other. That's a precipitate. It's insoluble, so it doesn't dissolve into water, like all of the other ions floating around. In order to identify a precipitate, and you'll need to because those are the only real products of a chemical reaction, if you just put ions together, they'll, dis they'll just dissolve back into the water. You won't get a lump. You need the lump. You just use this table. Anything soluble on this side will not be a precipitate, and anything not soluble will be on this side. If it's attached to a nitrate, a perchlorate, alkali metal, or ammonium, it'll be soluble, so that's not a precipitate. If it, however, is attached to silver, lead, or mercury, as long as, th as, long as any of these three is not attached to a nitrate or perchlorate, it won't be soluble, and it'll come out as this lump. Same for hydroxides, only if it's attached to an alkali metal or barium, it will be soluble and not be a precipitate. So turning back to our reaction over here, we can easily identify the precipitate we produced. Over on this side, we've got lead and nitrate. Those are just a bunch of ions. They're soluble because they're, they're attached to a nitrate. Now over here, potassium iodide. Well, since you've got an alkali metal attached to it, then it's got to be soluble. So neither of these are precipitates. You'll just see them as those clear liquids. Put them together, though. Lead iodide. Lead here is not soluble, and it's not attached to either nitrate or perchlorate. So this one happens to be your precipitate. Potassium nitrate, however, that's attached to a nitrate, so it's got to be soluble. It's not your precipitate, and so no real chemical reaction is considered to have occurred here. Your ions are still just floating around in water. This is what you need to focus on. Now, whenever you do get a precipitate, you might be asked to write out an equilibrium for it. See, all precipitates, although they're considered insoluble, tend to dissolve in small micro amounts, just a few ions at a time. And so, all you have to do is take the precipitate down, PbI2, and break it up into its ions. There's lead, and so that's Pb2+, plus, and iodine. There are two iodines in this, so two I- minus ions. And that's your equilibrium. At, what, at the same time, you've got your precipitate dissociating into ions. Some of those ions will rejoin and make your precipitate. For this, you can write out your equilibrium expression. K, your equilibrium constant, equal to the concentration of your ions multiplied by each other, and then raised to the power of their coefficient. Pb2 plus has no coefficient, raised to the power of 1, therefore. I minus has the coefficient of 2, so raised to the power of 2. You do not need to include the precipitate in this. In fact, don't. You don't need it at all. Now, you might use this to solve for the concentration of one of your ions, or maybe your equilibrium constant, depending on the question your teacher asks. Usually, you'll be asked to solve for a concentration, and you'll be given your equilibrium constant. In this instance, we have an equilibrium constant of 60 and a concentration of Pb2 plus at 15 molar. Using that, we can solve for the concentration of I minus ions. All we need to do is plug in. Our K is 60, and we have a Pb2 plus of 15 molar. Unknown I minus concentration, but we do know whatever it is, it's squared. 60 divided by 15 will give us 4. And so that's the concentration of I minus squared. All we have to do is square root both sides, and we find out the concentration of I minus is just 2 molar. And that's all there is. To recap, precipitates are the only real products of a chemical reaction. Ions that dissociate in water will just float around. These, however, are insoluble, and they'll come out as kind of a lump of something or other. You can tell by using this table. Anything soluble on this side, those won't be precipitates. Anything that's not soluble will be a precipitate, unless it's attached to any of these things in parentheses. Here's an example of a common precipitation reaction. You, you'll probably do this one in the lab. Whenever you do locate a precipitate, it'll form an equilibrium, which you might need to write out. Just break it down into its ions. You, using that equilibrium equation, you can then write an equilibrium expression for it. K, your constant, is equivalent to all the ions concentration of multiplied by each other and raised to the power of the coefficient do not include the concentration of the precipitate. Right, that's all for now.
for now. Again, I'm Brian Pierce. See you next time.